I'm here with Council General Alcian Wilson. How are you doing today? I, the truth is I'm very exhausted. As you know, I just came in from Washington um, to host this event. So I, I am very exa uh, exhausted. And thank you so much for asking. So what is your commitment to the Team Jamaica Beko? So my commitment to the Team Jamaica Beko, um, you know, it goes way back. Um, in my past life, um, I'm, I was a banker, so I'm from the corporate community. Yeah. Um, so um, the civil servant world is brand new to me. Um, Mr. Erwin Clare uh, was someone that I've known for many, many years. Um, I remembered when I was on the emerging market desk at Bear Stearns, he reached out to me to invite me to be a sponsor. Um, to be one of the sponsors for the Team Jamaica Bickle. Um, at that time, I had no idea what the Team Jamaica Bickle is. Mm -hmm. And so he explained to me what the foundation was trying to accomplish. And um, I thought to myself, you know, this is wonderful and this is something that I should be a part of. Um, and so I became a sponsor. I think my first sponsorship was probably something in the way of only a thousand dollars, but Erwin assured me that that thousand dollars would go a long way. And um, and then uh, and, and I went. I attended for the first time. I attended the pen relays, mm -hmm. and I just fell in love. Um, I don't know if you have been. You have been. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I don't need to tell you what goes on at pen. It's like Jamaica Day. Yes. Right. Um, and so, but more importantly. Um, our athletes, our young kids, that are so dedicated and devoted and work hard. You heard Erwin spoke about that tonight. Some of them really don't have the support system. They're very resilient, they have the will, they have the dedication. They have the support of Team Jamaica, but they don't have the funding. Correct. And so, for me to step up to the plate to do what I can as the Council General to fulfill their dreams is something that I'm committed to do. So, what expectations do you have? For like the future, because you know COVID happened. Yes. What what expectations do you have? You know, with the team, you know, starting back ten relays and stuff like that. Yeah, um, yeah, you're right. So COVID, we're still in um, the pandemic, right. actually, um, and that's a fantastic question because we're heading down to pen relays. Um, the end of the month, the prime minister mm -hmm. will be coming up, and believe it or not, just two days ago. I wrote a letter to the interim president. We, they have now an, an interim president mm -hmm. at um, UPenn. And our athletes, I believe, is the sole reason why Penn is always sold out. Because if I was just explaining to a few of um, our um, attendees, guests, a minute ago, that if the stadium seats 100,000 persons, I guarantee you that 80,000 spectators are Jamaicans. And, and, I, and I know that to be true. So what do we get from that? Remember, you buy tickets to attend Penn. So Jamaicans, our diasporans, are generating the revenues. Mm -hmm. And as such, I believe that we need to have dialogue with the powers that be <coughs> at Penn. Dialogue around how can UPenn facilitate and assist not only our athletes better, but also our medical students, um, we're now moving towards a digital age. PM spoke about digital currency, which is coming. How can UPenn assist us with scholarships? And if they're already doing so, which I'll have the discussion with the interim president, then the expectation is for them to do one better. Yes. 
So I know you recently had meetings with Madame Vice President and the PM of Jamaica. What expectations overall do we have as a, you know, co collaborating as, you know, the Caribbean and the diaspora in, you know, achieving greatness across the Caribbean? Right, right. So, <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but, and in fact, you know, let me take that back because I didn't know this until today. Mm -hmm. um, today, I found out in one of our meetings in Washington that a prime minister from Jamaica had not visited the White House since 1995. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right? Let that sink in. So, what our Prime Minister, his trip, well, it's a working trip to Washington, what he hopes to accomplish is to have better dialogue. Better dialogue with the U.S. We were there to reintroduce ourselves. Everyone knows you can't go anywhere in the world and see a Jamaican flag and not know Correct. that, right? And so, but, you know, administration changes. You have, you know, uh, two years ago, the Republican Party and then now. And so administration changes. And with change, you have, you know, uh, members that are appointed. So we were there to reintroduce ourselves mm -hmm. and to inform um, the administration, um, you know, let them know who we are, what we're about, and you know, what we're trying to accomplish. Yeah. Um, now, it was a working trip that was led by the PM, so I, um, I am not privy to, you know, to go into details. Okay. You know, I leave that up to you know, when the press releases are released and so forth. But I can say that it was a very successful trip. I want to thank you for all that you have contributed, you know, to, you know, us as a diaspora. And I want to just say thank you again. Of course. And you're quite welcome. And thank you for coming. And please do not be a stranger.